Welcome to the Money, Mindset and Business podcast, where we talk about all things money, mindset and business with real life stories and real life people. Let's get into the episode. Welcome to the Money, Mindset and Business podcast. Today I am joined by Gemma and I can't wait to hear what she's got to say. So Gemma, please introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Dr. Gemma Andrew Adiyama and I'm an empowerment coach um, to mums, empowering mums to shift out of survival mode and gain physical clarity, confidence and fulfillment so they can rediscover their passions, purpose and identity beyond motherhood in a way that's on their terms. That sounds amazing. Um, I know kind of losing my identity is something that happened to me um, after I had kids. Um, and as far as I'm aware, it happens to a lot of women. Um, there's not just the whole body changes, it's the whole, oh my God, there's a li- this little thing that needs all of my attention. And it's very easy to lose yourself. So how is it that you currently work with people? What is it that, what is it that you do with your business? So um, I have two main offerings. So my three-month program, Be Becoming, one-to-one, which is one-to-one coaching. Um, and then I have my Thriving 90, which is like a one-off ni- um, 90 minutes. Um, for people who aren't ready to commit to a longer-term coaching program, because I totally appreciate that not everyone needs three months worth of coaching. And I, when I originally started out, I actually had a six-month program. But for the people that I work with, that was just a bit too long. So I reduced it to three months. Then I also do like workshops and masterclasses throughout the year as well, um, kind of featuring like a specific topic um, that I've been asked to talk about or on something that's come up in conversation a lot. Um, and obviously I've got my podcast as well, the Weekend Mum podcast. Um, I'm just in the middle of um, recording season five of that, uh, which is amazing. And yeah, I wanted to do a podcast for so, so long, like for years, but then I kind of got stuck in that space of, oh my God, there's so many other podcasts out there, out there. Who's going to want to listen to me? Like, who's going to want to hear what I have to say? And kind of really, um, really bogged down by my inner critic like and it honestly it kind of um froze me for years when it came to sorting out this podcast but after um kind of investing coaching and kind of working on myself I just thought you know what screw it let's just put it out there and see what happens and now we're kind of five seasons in and people are listening to it and they get lovely comments like feedback and people relate to it so that's really really nice I love that. that. That's amazing. That's amazing. Um, so you, you you're saying there that you do workshops based upon conversations that you're having. So what would you say are the kind of reoccurring themes that you find with the moms that you work with? What are the s- sorts of things that generally people come to you with on a regular basis? And a lot are kind of redefining our identity since becoming a mum, um, because you you basically birth a baby, but you also birth a whole new version of yourself and kind of looking at what that looks like, how that feels like and um what that what that can do kind of moving forward, like what are your priorities, what are your core values, because everything shifts when you become a mum. Um, also the kind of like work-life balance, that's almost like a top one. Um, mum's trying to find time for themselves, like with everything going on, you know, spinning so many plates, how do I find time in my day just for me? And um, mum guilt as well is always a big one, kind of, um, yes, I want to prioritise myself. I want to aspire for more outside of motherhood. Does that, does that make me a bad mum? Does that mean I love my children? I don't love my children. Um, and lots of things, kind of navigating, coming out of maternity leave, kind of career changes. So all sorts of things, really, a real mixed bag. Um, currently, I'm working with a client who's struggling with self-belief and kind of wants to make changes in their life, a career change. They actually want to be self-employed um, because that kind of fits their lifestyle better since becoming mum, but they just don't have the confidence to kind of put that first step in place. So I'm kind of working through some limiting beliefs um, with her and also kind of 
setting boundaries I think that's a big one for mums as well yeah because we do give so much of ourselves away we can be kind of people pleasers um just by default like we just naturally like as mums we're givers aren't we we're you know we're there to provide and I think that naturally falls into every aspect of our lives and communicating boundaries clearly and confidently can be such a struggle um so that's another one that comes up a lot as well awesome um is there anything that comes up for your clients around obviously when when as women we have children we go on maternity leave um facing this back onto like the money side of things we are reliant on say a partner possibly for that maternity leave that's that income because I know, I know when I went on maternity leave I had statutory maternity pay which was about 500 pounds um and I was earning prior to that like two grand a month so to take that drop down meant my husband had to step up and essentially subsidize me as well as the new child have you had any women that are have been in that place and they, they struggle with I wouldn't say being reliant but having to lean slightly heavier on their partner financially definitely 100 percent. I think that can be a common strand for a lot of mums suddenly they feel kind of disempowered by motherhood because they were leaving leading these kind of ambitious lives they were in careers that they loved and that's all had to kind of change you know take a different direction and they are bringing in less money and they feel like they're not doing enough or they're not providing enough in the family home but the kind of big kind of um exclamation mark here is that they are but it's just in a different way it's not in a monetary way but it's kind of taking obviously you're keeping a small human or small humans alive that's a massive feat and I can totally relate because sometimes my <laughs> my husband comes home and, said, and says I've published a research paper today I only work part-time in my business at the moment so I've got um toddler twins so I'm a mum I'm a four um and they're at nursery two days a week um so that's when I work in my business and on the other days I'm kind of folding laundry I'm kind of chasing them around the house and um and kind of running the household as it were and like yeah, he comes home and says oh well, you know I published a research paper today and I, I'm like oh well I've kind of conquered the laundry mountain today <laughs> you know so it's quite like kind of a, a spectrum of achievements between us both um but it doesn't mean that I've been working any less it's just it's a different and that's what I tell the ones that I work with you're still contributing it's just in a very different way and it doesn't have to always be that way just because it's like that now and that's the current season that you're in it doesn't mean that you're going to be stuck there like things do change seasons change and um it, that you know just kind of accepting that can really help you through that um that season and allow you to be more self-compassionate to, um, to yourself because I think you can get stuck in the kind of oh my god I'm not doing enough I'm not providing enough and go down that kind of um that kind of hole when really you are doing enough and you know you're doing your best with what you have at that time yeah I completely agree with that I think that there's a lot of mothers and stay-at-home dads out there that will discredit how hard it is to bring up a child I know in my personal circumstances um I took a year off and I, I left my son with his dad for a day hmm. and he was overwhelmed he was overwhelmed with what's involved with in terms of like nappy changing feeding napping as well as keeping on top of what's going on in and around the house um and a lot of people who are in that don't read don't because they just do it on a day-to-day -day basis they don't realize how flipping amazing they really are especially yourself with, with being a mom of twins and that's not one child to deal with that's two <laughs> <laughs> two at the same age i mean i i the thought of me having two of my youngest makes me want to just leave the house. Because <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's four, he's nearly he's four at the end of this month, but he is hard work. Mm -hmm. 
he is hard yeah. work. Um, but to have two, oh. <laughs> um, that's crazy, but it's fun, it's rich, it's full on. Yeah. And I'm kind of, in some ways, obviously, it'll get overwhelming, just get very busy, it's very exhausting, and all of that. But I know that in 20 years' time, I will miss the kind of richness and the fullness of life, you know, when they've all got, you know, gone to university and all whatever it is that they're doing, they've left home. I will miss all of that and uh, that's why I'm so passionate about mums having something for themselves yeah. right now whilst they're in the thick of it because that's why so many like parents when the children do leave home they have that you know empty nest syndrome because they don't have anything in their life because their whole world has been about their children and they've forgotten about themselves um, and that's why I think it's so important to yeah. one of the many reasons why it's so important to have something for yourself outside of motherhood. And it doesn't make you a bad parent, or it doesn't mean that you love your children any less. In fact, I think it shows that you love your children even more because you're modelling that behaviour to them. That actually it's okay to have something for yourself. It's okay to look after you, you know, after yourself. It's okay to appreciate yourself and know that you're deserving of your own care. Um, and it kind of breaks that kind of generational conditioning that to be worthy, we always have to be productive or doing something. You know, you can rest, you can take some time out for yourself, and that's perfectly okay. Yeah, I completely agree. Completely agree. I mean, there, there will be say mums listening to this that are like, yeah, but, but what about that 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 like you've already mentioned that mom guilt? What what are your how do you help your clients um, beyond what you've just said about obviously seeing the bigger picture? How do you help those moms navigate that mom guilt? Um, because it's something we all have and we all relate to. Um, because like you said, there's this societal pressure telling us that we must be there for our children all the time. Um, but we know me and you know oh, that that's not true mm -hmm. so how how could you support somebody a lady listening to this today who's feeling that mom guilt that that that's really kind of really wants to do something for her but that that inner voice in her head is telling her no you can't do that because you're going to ruin your child's life mm -hmm. because that's how extreme the mom guilt gets isn't it so yeah, what advice could you give her and what can she do practically after listening to this podcast today, to take that first step? Well, firstly, I think I would suggest pinpointing the trigger. Like, what is it that is causing you to feel that mum guilt? What is the root cause of that mum guilt? Like, is it a past story that you've kind of held on to? Is it something from your childhood? Is it um, like a behaviour that you've seen um, in your own kind of childhood that's stayed with you? Is it kind of fear of judgment for other people? Is it like societal expectations and you're not fitting kind of societal mould of what mums should be doing? Like what is the root cause of your mum guilt? And then kind of work from there to try and move past it, kind of acknowledge it, move past it and let it go. But also I'd say that doing something for yourself has such a massive ripple effect. Like I talk about the ripple effect of self-care or doing something for yourself or whatever you want to call it um a lot because when you take care of yourself when you do something for yourself it's not only you that benefits it's your children your partner your relationships your work is so much better um the quality of your work is so much better when you take time for yourself um your pets your pants at your house everything so much better and more nourished when you nourish yourself um so that's what i'll say as well so it just think it's not just about you it's about about everyone around you and it's also about including yourself in the care that you give your, you know you give to others you want to say to your child oh don't take that opportunity because i don't know um because it's going to be i don't know detrimental to them or, or something like that you, you wouldn't like say to them oh don't don't do this thing even though you know it's going to be good for them you would encourage them to go after their dreams their goals and and all that kind of amazing stuff so why when it's us when it's the mum why do we kind of put that brick wall up and we say no i'm not i'm, I'm not going to do it because 
you know but you wouldn't do that for your child so kind of look at it that way as well or like how sometimes you have to mother yourself sometimes you have to be you know see yourself as a child and have that voice in your head that's kind of mothering you and telling you kind of kind beautiful nourishing nurturing thoughts um to allow you to kind of move past that so i think yeah just pinpoint the the cause of the problem really um kind of talk to yourself and mother yourself and be more self-compassionate to yourself and actually realize that by doing something for yourself it's not just about you it's about about everyone around you including your child as well yeah i completely agree with that there i mean i i speak to the, the women in my world and a lot of them i explain it in a way that by we, we talk about cups so filling your cup yeah. fill, fill your cup up with self-love essentially and what that does so that's your self-care whatever it is you do to boost those feel-good hormones inside your body that make you feel fantastic fill your cup up with those and then what you do is you serve everybody else, including your children, your partner, your plants, your dogs, cats, clients, everybody in the overflow. Yeah. So fill yourself to the point of bursting. And if you serve everybody else from this overflow of love and compassion, you show up as a completely different person. Because if that cup is empty, you are deprived, you're exhausted, and you have nothing left to give. And how is that fair for your child, for you to be running on empty? Exactly that. And depletion doesn't serve anyone, does it, at all? If you're running on empty, then, yeah, like you say, you've got nothing in the tank to give. I mean, if your phone needs charging, you instantly go and look for the charger and plug it in. And that's what we need to be doing with ourselves daily and taking micro moments for yourself throughout the day so it doesn't get to the point where you are depleted. So like through the day, you're constantly kind of topping yourself up and filling your cup if that makes sense. So you don't get to the point where you are completely depleted and you have nothing left to give. There's always something in the tank. Um, and yeah, just really just taking you know five minutes ten minutes whatever time it is that you have for yourself you can never underestimate the time that you invest back in yourself because everyone benefits and i think that's the beautiful beautiful thing and gift about self-care and taking care of yourself that yeah you can just serve with overflow and yeah i think that's just magical yeah i mean it's like what you said at the very beginning about the ripple effect if you are filling your cup with love and compassion you're giving love and compassion and then model people who are around you are modeling what you're doing for themselves with love and compassion and then people they interact with they flow with love and compassion and that is the ripple of who you are and who you be every single day that's the you could be impacting joe blogs down the road just by being who you are and filling your cup but if your child's at school, you're filling your cup. You've had a wonderful morning with your children before you drop them off at school. You drop, drop them off at school and your child is happy and content and loved. And they are interacting with their friends at school. And they're feeling that love and compassion. And it's just like, why would you not do it? <laughs> it's a no-brainer, really, when you put it yeah. like <laughs> But so many struggle with it. So many yeah. struggle with it. Whether it's a kind of time issue or just not kind of feeling worthy of their own care or there's um kind of I don't know, lack of funds and the mindset around what self care should look like. Because we have this whole kind of commercialised version of self care that it's, you know, spa days, days and shopping trips and holidays and, and all that kind of stuff. But really the very basics of self care is looking after yourself so making sure that you're hydrated making sure that you're getting enough sleep making sure that you're going to the toilet when you want to go to the toilet not kind of holding it in until hours later you know um making yourself a nourishing meal if you are time poor, having those basics yes they're not very instagram sexy but you know we're living in the real world 
Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. We're living in the real world. And if you don't have time to, I don't know, to meditate or to journal or, or whatever it is, those extra things, then focusing on those very basic needs is perfectly okay. That is still yeah. you showing up for yourself. That is still you prioritizing yourself. Because when you do show up for yourself, when you do prioritize yourself, you are not only nourishing yourself, but you are reminding yourself with each of one with each of those actions that you are worthy of your own care. And that's why it's really important that we keep up this routine of constantly looking after ourselves and prioritizing ourselves. Because it not only does it nourish our bodies, but it nourishes our mindset as well. And it kind of, in, you know, boosts our self, self-esteem, our self-worth and our self-confidence as well. So we will go out for those opportunities. We will put ourselves out there for, I don't know, in our businesses or in our careers. And um, because we know that we are deserving, because we have shown ourselves that love, we, we've shown yeah. ourselves that care. So it's all, it, it's all kind of, kind of, mixing together and it's all kind of in one you know one big ecosystem one thing impacts the other yeah so I'm going to ask you a personal question so you're a mom of two toddlers I'm a mom of four I've got well, a mom of four but two yeah. toddlers yes <laughs> <laughs> what is your self-care routine my self-care routine is very up and down as you can imagine <laughs> But it's very much grounded in my morning routine. Um, so even with newborn twins, I made sure that I got up just before my kids got up. And I'm not talking about five o'clock in the morning. I'm talking about, you know, like 10 minutes before. Because I've realised over the years and doing this work and working on myself that it isn't necessarily, necessarily like a seven step morning routine that I need in the morning. I just need a buffer between when I wake up and when my kids wake up. So I don't feel like I've been spat out of a washing machine. Um, and you know, I really like to ease myself into the day. So that could look like a variety of different things. And I got into the habit of asking myself, what is it that I need? What do I need with this time? Whether it's 30 minutes, 10 minutes, five minutes, whatever. It could be, I don't know a quick workout it could be reading my book it could be staring at the wall for five minutes you know it could be writing my to-do list for the day and you know looking at my plan and seeing what I have to do it could be um you know reading my book or just like watching a bit of tv whatever like a whole multitude of different things and I really like having that flexibility and kind of asking myself what is it that I need because it takes the pressure of having to have this kind of really regimented routine, which as a mum of four, isn't very realistic in my life. And I, I, I can appreciate that a lot of mums would feel the same. Um, so those seven step miracle morning routines are amazing if you've got the time and if that's you, brilliant. But I think as mums, we need flexibility and flow in our routines because our children, they're not robots. You can't program them to wake up at a certain time. Really wish we could, but we can't. <laughs> so you do have to be really flexible. And sometimes I've got half an hour, sometimes I've got 20 minutes, sometimes I've got five minutes, sometimes I've got no time at all. And that's when I really feel like I've been thrown into the day and like chaos is just kind of mounting up on top of me and the demands are going and this that and the other and the kids are kind of everywhere um so I really make an effort to have some kind of morning routine and yeah it's probably not very instagrammable but I don't care it doesn't have to be this well-oiled machine it just has to be something for me and that grounds me in my day that really kind of sets me up helps me to kick start the day and ease into the day gently which is what I like I hate it when kids wake up and it's just like ah, you know it's just like chaos you just wake up and it's just instant chaos I just like to have a little buffer um in between me waking up and the kids waking up just to kind of ease me in gently that's what I like <laughs> you know what you're a girl after my own heart um and strangely I only realized I needed this buffer in the last couple of months and my kids are four and six <laughs> So I've been I've been waking up to the chaos for six years. Wow. And I was I I was struggling. I was struggling because there was no time 
for me to actually ground into you know right I'm awake now um and like you I've, I've added a I've got a buffer now so my my alarm goes off at six my kids will wake up anytime between half past five and seven o'clock and if they're up at half past five I tell them not to come out of their room because they've got one of them grow clocks until the light's on don't come out your room so they'll they'll play in there so my alarm goes off at six and the kids come out about quarter past six usually. So I've got that time to kind of, like you said, just kind of like settle into myself. Right, what do I need this morning? How am I feeling? What's going on for me? Because I mean, as women, we have our cycles as well, which change a lot of what's going on with us. And since I've added that buffer into my life, my debt, my my who I am has completely changed, and my days are so much better. Isn't it revolutionary? And it's the most simplest thing. Like it's always the simplest things that have the biggest impact. And yeah, for me, that has been like revolutionary. It's such a game changer in how I feel about the day, how I feel about myself, how I communicate with my kids. Like I'm less snappy and kind of not really me like I haven't woken up yet. That that kind of feeling. Um, and just more in control as well. Like I'm like I'm just kind of. On it, let's do breakfast, let's get ready, let's do, you know, just kind of more in control of of the morning. Um, yeah, and it's such a much better feeling than that kind of frantic, kind of disre dysregulated nervous system, um, which is quite common when you're just kind of thrown into the day and yeah, it's yeah, and it's really chaotic. Yeah, well, when we were on holiday last week, we got, me and my husband got a 4 a.m. wake up call from the children. Um, that was a struggle. <laughs> I'm not gonna like the pair of us were completely off. Um, so we kind of we we essentially had a conversation and said, right, I'm gonna go and regulate, and then it's your turn to regulate. So we had some time because we're in a caravan. We shut the door in the room and had some time to ourselves to just do whatever we needed to do to ground ourselves into the day and just have fun because I mean we were on holiday we weren't there to be snappy and be miserable we were there to have fun and it worked it worked how amazing that you both gave yourself that time and it completely kind of changed your approach to the day and how you felt about it and you ended up having fun it is yeah. hard when the kids are out of their routine though really really hard because you expect the day to go one way and all of a sudden it's going a different direction and it can be so hard to kind of rein everything back in mm. yeah i mean we are quite good in trying to stick to the the kids routine in the morning so in terms of eating and then getting dressed and brushing teeth so that's all done the same but obviously we were just not going to school or not going to after school activities and all this sort of stuff um but yeah very powerful very very powerful and i think that's definitely something um i mean that there will possibly be moms on here who've got newborn children so that whole regulation of yourself when you've got a newborn is difficult i mean i had i had mine in my room until he was 18 months old so it was like i'd wake up when he woke up in the morning because he was up all night long so what do you think what do you think women like that could do because there's obviously this like you say with seasons of um, motherhood the seasons of children and that that first six months <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> then we all recognize that sigh <laughs> i think just be gentle like be gentle with yourself like if you you know obviously it's really important that you take care of yourself as well but you in those kind of first few months when you're really in the trenches of motherhood and um things are tired tiring you're sleep deprived you're kind of round the clock 24 hour care to this this small small baby i think it just really just go back to the basics like Forget the meditation, forget the kind of, I don't know, 
um the yoga like the yoga unless unless she wants to do that and you have time for that or, um you have time for that but just really strip things back and just go back to the basics like make sure you're hydrated make sure you're nourishing yourself with food make sure that you're getting enough sleep when you can um so i know with with a newborn it's hard to get any sleep but trying to make sure that the sleep that you do get is good quality sleep so maybe don't like, look at your phone before you go to sleep that kind of to ensure that you get the best quality sleep even if it's like a couple of hours here and there um so yeah just really focus on those those basics and as you move through your motherhood journey kind of more space with, you know what help you will open up for yourself and you be able to do like meditation yoga I always find that going out for walks was really good because I, I could get the baby to sleep I could listen to a podcast I was connecting with nature and everything feels so much easier with the kids when we're outside because yeah. when you're in the house you've got the laundry pile like just mount like a mountain beside you the pots are piled in the sink the toys everywhere like it's utter chaos at least when you're outside it might be still a little bit chaotic but at least you can shut the door on the mess and you don't have to think about that you can just focus on on the kids and you can get you know get some time for yourself outside as well and when I go outside it's just like a massive like exhale a massive ex exhale and kids are having fun like my eldest one's nine and then I've got a five-year-old and what one-year-old twins so the five-year-old and the nine-year-old just go off and play and they'll they'll find friends in the park and that's then sorted if I get the twins to nap that's great um I might kind of have a podcast on or I might have my book in my bag and I can just like kind of read a really cheeky chapter of my book um so we're all having fun and it's all great um but yeah I think getting outside really really helped me especially with the newborn kind of period with the twins because that was just yeah that was <laughs> that was something else that was something yeah. else especially with the other two where I've got two older ones as well so it was just yeah a constant juggle of different needs and wants and demands and yeah it was hard it was really really hard and it's still tiring but it's tiring in a different way because my twins are kind of walking now and they're going in different directions and trying to climb bookcases and trying to climb onto the sofa to turn the light switch on it's kind of a different kind of exhaustion like constantly chasing them around um but yeah you, you do move through it and I think just kind of remind yourself that it's just a season like it won't always be this way and I know when you're in the thick of it you think oh my god this is going to go on forever but actually <laughs> it doesn't I promise you there will be a time where more time will open up for yourself the baby will sleep for longer periods you might have to co-sleep to make that happen like you you just adjust and adapt um but yeah diff obviously different seasons of motherhood happen and nothing is forever um so yeah just kind of be compassionate with yourself and you know what the housework will wait like if that's something that's stressing you out just kind of let it go I know for me um a tidy home means a tidy mind like I'm very much impacted by my external environment but I just have to let it go like I you know there's literally in my kitchen there's an area with like clothes drying on it but they're dry they've been there for five days I just haven't had time to put them away but what can I do you know what can I do well, I was busy and as long as everyone's got clean pants it's like my bare minimum now <laughs> we're good we're good yeah. you know um so I always look at that as have I lowered my standards or have I just learned to be more compassionate towards myself and I do think it's the latter I have learned oh, yeah. to be more compassionate to myself because there is there's been no other way I can't do it all and my kind of motherhood mantra is I can do anything but I can't do everything um you know some days I do keep all the balls up in the air some days I drop two sometimes I drop them all um but it's just the way that's just the season that we're in at the moment it would always be like that and um I'm just yeah I'm, I'm just I think I'm a lot better at letting things go and um it doesn't matter if I don't fit that perfect motherhood mold because really no one does we're all bringing it and that's okay yeah definitely definitely and I think your your comment about getting outside is the easiest thing that you can do with a newborn child if you're getting that 
overwhelmed kind of feeling just go outside i mean i i wore my child newborn because he was clingy and it meant that my arms were free for the toddler that i had <laughs> so just wear the baby and the baby loves it you have that connection with them and you're outside and it's just like <sighs> and it's easier it's it's a hell of a lot easier so that, i think that's that's wonderful um there was something i was thinking of then and it's completely slipped my mind it'll come back to me it will come back to me but um, in terms of what you've said there about lowering your standards or just learning to prioritize is the way i like to think of it is i've had to do the same i i'm a clean freak is what my husband would call me and with children you it's it's impossible to keep up with the destruction is what i'm gonna call it <laughs> yeah it's like a tornado has passed through <laughs> um it's impossible to keep up with the destruction and you'd essentially spend all of your time cleaning and tidying at that point in time is that really a priority really and i find like once i've tidied it's messed up again within like five seconds and what is the point <laughs> what is the point in expending that energy and getting really frustrated and feeling resentful and kind of going down the rabbit hole of oh my god why why can i not do this why is what i'm doing not good enough just just let it be right just let it be they're happy yeah it's a mess but a mess is a mess it's not the end of the world you know it's not the no. end of the world um and just tidy up when you know when they when you can because i find that i'm tidying up one room and they're destroying another and i'm just literally just going around in circles all day just tidying mess and it's like what why am i doing this to myself I just yeah and they, they don't care about the mess i think it's yeah. the expectation that we put on ourselves um and the kind of outside pressures as well and those societal standards um that when you do let go of them honestly you just feel so much more settled so much more liberated like a weight has been lifted from your sh shoulders and it can look like many different forms but for me just being okay that the house is a mess it's okay like we're not you know we're, we're we're okay we're doing okay um it's not the end of the world and i'll get to it when i get to it like it's not yeah. a bad thing it doesn't mean that i'm a bad mom no I've, got, I've had to prioritize other things and that's fine yeah i mean what's kind of springing to my mind here is is obviously the the sorts of people you see on social media stacy solomon for one and mrs hinch they've got stacy's got three million kids and her house is always spotless mrs hinge is the cleaner so she's got kids dogs llamas <laughs> i think they're llamas <laughs> and her house is spotless however they are not you and what's going on in your life is not comparable to them but that is obviously what we see and what we're influenced by because that is how social media works and it's so easy to say so watch a, a stacy solomon video and see this spotless house with these wonderfully decorated dining tables where i just think if that was in my house all of those plates would be smashed because my toddler toddler is not a toddler anymore four-year-old be annoyed that they're in the way and he just throws them on the floor yeah i've had to i don't even know what i'm going to do with the uh, christmas tree this year because i know all the baubles are going to end up on the floor but yeah exactly and also you don't know what's going on behind the scenes like you're seeing this beautiful kind of setup but actually the living room could be completely trash like you, you just don't know and you don't know what resources they have available to them either like they could have a living nanny that they're not kind of um telling you about or yeah. like the the parents would live next door or in an annex and they can be over kind of helping or they could have you know fleet of cleaners like we, you just don't know what's going on behind the camera um so yeah it's very easy to get kind of stuck in that comparison trap and that can be kind of like the dark side of social media and obviously the addiction um of it as well but i found social media yes i get pulled into comparison traps but also the connections and the relatability on social media has been wonderful on my motherhood journey. Like I've met so many lovely people um, who've become friends. Um, I've been able to be okay about myself with people yeah. sharing the truths and being vulnerable and 
it because being a mum can be very isolating you do spend a lot of time by yourself you spend a lot of time with your own thoughts um so kind of opening up the app and seeing someone else going through the same thing that you're going through that you're struggling with can be such a comfort yeah. and can be very reassuring so there's there's positives and negatives to social media but for me the connections and the relatability that's definitely what i'm there for although i do oh, get yeah. kind of swayed into a comparison as well <laughs> yeah yeah i mean that my thought just kind of popped back into my head then when you were talking about you don't know what's going on behind the scenes um, and that my, my comment is, is ask for help. Like you've just said, you can't do everything, so don't feel like you have to. I mean, my my journey with my with my second was was different because we hit COVID, so my husband was home for like six months out of the first year which was incredible because it wasn't me on my own with two children. And even if it wasn't that situation, there would have been somebody there with me because I was fully aware that I'm not able to fully care for both children and cook and clean and look after myself on my own. And I think a lot of mums that I speak to specifically struggle to ask for help. And even if they do get offered help, they, they'll say no, because they feel like they need to do it all themselves. And I mean, I don't know what the, the saying is, it, is it takes a village. Yeah. It takes a village and one person does not create a village. So don't be afraid to ask for help is what I'm going to add into all of that so if you are in those first six months and you are feeling it all on top of you phone someone ask somebody to come around for half an hour 10 minutes 15 minutes and just go and take that time that child is not going to die in 15 minutes or even half an hour it's going to be absolutely fine and once you've regulated yourself you'll come back a completely different mother. Totally that, totally that. And I think there can be, some mums kind of feel like a failure for asking for help. You know, yeah. why am I not able to, to do this? Like everyone else is doing it. Everyone else seems to be functioning perfectly fine as a mum and with all these children and et cetera, et cetera. But why am I struggling? Why am I finding it hard? But asking for help doesn't mean that you're a failure actually it shows so much courage to be able to do that and it's you can take taking control of the situation before the situation controls you it's you kind of reaching out and saying actually i'm not do i'm not doing so well here i'm kind of feeling a little bit overwhelmed um before you start sinking and that's you kind of that's you getting that courage that's you being confident enough to to reach out for help um so you don't sink so you don't um kind of burn out and exhaust yourself that's that's an amazing thing and i don't you know mum shouldn't feel shouldn't feel kind of like a failure because they're asking for help it's such a overwhelming job you know it's it's crazy the mental load of motherhood is draining the physical load of motherhood is draining like all the different things that we have to do as mums some of it like we don't even we say like obviously it's like the cooking the cleaning but what about kind of remembering the pee kit and the you know the, the doctor appointments and you know there's so so much to this um so of course it's hard it's hard because it is hard you know spades are spades right yeah. um, <laughs> it, it really is hard it's one of the most demanding um jobs out there um and i don't think we kind of appreciate that and we don't give ourselves enough credit for that um because yeah mums yeah, mums are incredible we, we're just yeah and like you say like sometimes like our partners don't appreciate how difficult it is and because i know sometimes when my if i popped out and my husband's looking after the kids he will literally just look after the kids like the house is a complete disarray it's um it's just all over the place whereas when i've got the kids i'm you know i'll, I'll be cooking i'll be Cleaning, I'll be, I might be folding some laundry, I'll be like doing a bit more detasking, but he solely focuses on the kids, which is fine. 
but again I, I think it's that kind of lack of appreciation of not yeah. realizing how much there is to it um which I think is yeah um it's a conversation for another day <laughs> yeah yeah I mean the, I, I've started verbal diarying diarying my mental load onto my husband when he comes home from school I'm like right he doesn't come home from school he comes home from work <laughs> I'm like right this 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 needs to get done tonight okay what do you want to do <laughs> yeah um and that again has only been a re a recent thing because I've got my own kind of journey with it all but it's like well we, we're in a partnership we create the children together therefore we're rearing them together and this is our home so the responsibility is not on me to make sure it's all running smoothly Absolutely. it's our responsibility so he gets that now he gets the verbal diarrhea and i've even asked him to stop cooking and he's like oh. <laughs> it's all good fun I love that that you're that you've been able to communicate that with like confidently and um and he's accepted it as well like this is the way it is like I you know exactly I and mean, exactly that like you're, this is a partnership so why should all the load be on you it should be it should be shared it led to resentment I resented him for not knowing what was in my head yeah and that's an unfair judgment to make on him because he he does not his brain doesn't work the same as mine because i've got a i've got a, a female brain he's got a male brain i see things that he does not see simple fact that's a fact of life so for me to persecute him is unfair and it's my problem so if i want to communicate with him something that i need him to help me with i just need to communicate it and that is that in advocating for yourself isn't it which i think mums really struggle with just advocating and communicating how they feel and what they need in that moment and um yeah we definitely need to do more of that because i think across the country there's a kind of imbalance of kind of in domestic chores and kind of um kind of raising children and stuff and you know all that kind of stuff um but yeah i think advocating for yourself is something mums definitely need to do more of and not feel kind of ashamed or even be like apologetic about it you know you just it's okay like just communicate what it is that you need and um yeah and and don't kind of fall under the trap of thinking that you're moaning or whining <laughs> no. I, to do. I mean we may have to remind them a couple of times yeah <laughs> But um, eventually, it sinks in. It does. It's part and parcel. Yeah, it might. Um, it might take a little bit of time, but nothing changes if nothing changes. And if you want to see a shift in kind of the dynamics in your house, you have to. You have to make changes, and it can feel a little bit uncomfortable. But once you oh, get, yes. but you come. You come through. You come through the inside. It's like stand, standing in your power and going, you're right, this is it, and this is what I need to make my life happier. Simple as that. Yeah, and when you're happy, they're going to be happy. So it's a ripple. Exactly. <laughs> it's that ripple. It's that ripple. Anyway, this has been an, a lovely conversation. So I'm going to ask, what are your final parting words? But anybody who might be listening, male, female, mother, soon to be mother, never been a mother, but has got friends, family, sisters, cousins that are mothers, what are your parting words as to to support them after following what we've talked about today? For me, it would be to take some time out for yourself, whether it's five minutes, ten minutes, thirty minutes, whatever it is that you have. Remember that you need to be nourished you need to be grounded and, and connected to yourself and when you look after yourself 
you're also looking after your family as well because it's not about me first it's about me too and including yourself in that love that you give so freely to others and like we mentioned before when you fill your cup up you can serve with the overflow and yeah that's just magic of self-care perfect